Hello YouTube and welcome back to Locked Out. This is where we're detailing the uh, the ace locks and then we're going to we're going to get into uh, the flashy stuff this time. I'm going to show you my hybrid ass kicker. Um, <clears throat> so, if you'll remember from the segments before, hopefully you watched them. Um, these two products, uh, this is a Huck pick. You get these from China, northern China. <laughs> um, and this is a Southern. You get these from the States. Uh, this one actually came in from a different state than you order it from. And I'm not going to mention too much more about that. Um, but but it's that's kind of strange. Anyway, um, we've already been over the strengths and weaknesses of these two products. Um, generally, I would say when it comes to, to flaws that totally rule out functionality, this is the one that comes to you in the mail as a completely useless piece of shit because of these little rubber bands that it's got instead of this right here, this chuck that you can tighten. So, you know, if, if you can just get one get this one and hope for the best but honestly honestly I would implore you to get both of these and I'm about to show you why now one thing that I like about lock picks in general is that they're incredibly simple um, and these are really no exception to that that idea um, two tools these two allen wrenches right here are all that's needed to take both of these apart down to their asses and that's what I'm going to go ahead and do because we're going to play some mix, mix and match kind of stuff. Um, if you'll recall from the prior segments I have issues, quality issues especially um, with both of these products. They have, they have different things about them that suck but both of them do have things about them that do suck. So we're just going to go ahead and take them down to their bare bones pieces so that I can show you my my idea and my reasoning for, for doing this and, and exactly why I chose to keep which components and, and, and whatnot. But if you'll recall, the main reason that I felt like neither of these were going to work too well uh, uh, had to do with the the main body on the southern pick, which is flawed, um, and the uh, and the uh, the chuck or the the, the source of, of resistance for the little pin sliding um, on on the on the huck pick. And so we've got to figure out a way to make something that's gonna will compensate for the shortcomings of both. So we've got to make a hybrid. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of dismantle the chuck. There's a detail about this pick that I forgot to show you in the southern pick video. It's not that big a deal, but I did want to make sure that I showed you this. Um, the way this works, the way this whole chuck device works, is let me go ahead and get some zoomage here. You see these two black rubber um, gaskets or whatever the hell I, I'm calling them gaskets again. That's not what the hell they are. O-rings. These two little black rubber O-rings in here. They get squeezed to death by this piece that goes in here. And you can see that it's small enough to go inside the body of this part, but it's large enough to be pretty snug against the walls. And it actually constricts and presses on those two little rubber pieces so that when the entire chuck is together, this little ring, which slides on over that lip, 
when you tighten this ring it presses down on the cup part and it starts squeezing those little rubber whoa start squeezing those little rubber washers so that when that happens the little parts of the washer uh, not washers but um, um you know, you know whatever the hell those things are I just said what they are were a second ago o-rings you see how they're pooching out a little bit they're pooching out a little bit so that when these are going alongside the shaft of the tool and they're going in here like this those little pieces of rubber are going to squeeze this metal against the central shaft which is how you get your resistance to the to the, the spring tension inside the the lock see without a good decent consistent source of of resistance to those springs that you'll get from something like this versus the little rubber bands that are in the hot pick that's going to make all the difference in the world for whether or not you're going to be able to pick the lock that you're after okay just kind of slide this piece out here all right there once again is the comparison of the bodies and you might think that they're just about effectively the same size but they're not the real key to it is where these center rings are supposed to be locking because these things stop behind the ring so they can't go any further down this way so this is really what defines the center line of your pick and this the the southern pick body just comes up way short probably a good quarter inch um, which means that this would be useless for getting through uh, warded ace locks um, if there's any kind of warding on on the shroud side of the lock you will not be able to manipulate that lock with this because it won't reach um, God, I love the smell of that handle, but that's, you know, that's about that's, that's that's about the best thing you're getting for your money is the smell of that handle and this and this chuck here. That thing right there is really by itself worth the extra money too. Um, that washer is is essentially a useless piece of crap. Um, it's it's better to have this so. What I had to do was I had to take this entire circle of components here and figure out which of these could go with which of the others and make something that was overall good. So we already know that we can get rid of this. I don't want this because it's crap. It's not Scottish, it's crap. So we're going to have this. Having this instead of this implies that there's going to be some issues maybe with this you know like issues of it being on here but believe it or not that's not an issue at all that doesn't matter and you'll see why it has to do with how far it has to do with how far the little rubber rings are from this set screw but we don't have to worry about it is the, is the, is the, is the end of that line so since we're definitely going to be using this with that we can get rid of this so we don't need that now either so we're, so we're starting to eliminate parts okay I do not really want to use this even though it's nice and magnetic and whatnot it requires this piece in order to work and I'm not going to be able to use that piece on this body because I'm not going to be able to use this handle I'm going to have to use this handle or wait I just got that totally wrong I want to use this I'm gonna use this I like it I don't like this cheap little washer and I can't really use it anyway because of this handle and I'll show you why but we're getting rid of that okay we're actually gonna keep this and I'll show you why we, we actually need that so I'm going to put this here, 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 
we need this handle we need this handle because of this shaft you see the differences in the shafts mean the way this handle goes on it needs this little thin area here this kind of shank in order to slide in and there's no place for a set screw anywhere in here so ruling out this essentially rules this out as well ruling this out essentially rules out this handle so we can get rid of that too so we're stuck with this handle now the only other question is these now what I was pointing out earlier in another video I'll just go ahead and really highlight now get this up here it's gonna focus for shit and then I can pull the focus in a little bit all right there we go I'm going to show you the end on of both of these you see how that one's curved I made that point before it's got this nice little curve to it whereas this one is just a flat piece of metal all right and that wouldn't be such a big deal if we weren't thinking like I said about making the best tool that we can make out of the available parts which means we want to use the bent ones because they're a little bit thicker a little better quality and they've got this nice little feature on the end which comes in really damn handy so we're getting rid of these two and now via process of logical elimination we have the pieces that we're actually going to be using so handle goes on last just to make everything easy can make it really really easy putting this on in the proper direction and you can't really put it on there with it screwed in like that because the rubber pieces are not going to let you but then you line up this land here with that set screw push it forward just enough grab the correct allen wrench tighten it down until it stops another thing about this that really kind of pissed me off this right here is really low quality metal I took this set screw and you can actually overturn it and I've actually stripped it out but I, by the grace of something somebody it's actually able to stay in here anyway so you know I got really lucky there so we take the modified pins and I say modified because they've got, like I said, they've got those little bends on the end. And you've got to be careful when you're putting these in because those bends have a tendency to catch on the rubber. So you've got to push downward a little bit and just kind of ramp them in there. And if you get, if you encounter too much resistance while you're doing this part, don't, don't sweat it. Just skip that, skip that trough and go on to the next one and then and then go back to that that difficult one later on um, ninety percent of the time if you're having problems getting these in to to here you need to loosen this set screw even if you think that set screw is loose you need to loosen it some more and that'll fix your problem okay so now we've got these these pins in here that we want tighten this down a little bit to stop it going anywhere we can put that on there this on here like that all right and I'm not going to actually put this together because I'm just showing you how far you you know it, it, you, 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 you test it you build it up first to make sure everything will actually go together and in this case it will but there's one other thing I have to do and I'm going to do it now because it'll be more difficult later especially since I can just tell you now why I'm doing it there is a difference between this and the other such that this does not grab on quite as well as it could or should ideally so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the silicone pieces of crap from the other one and I'm gonna put it on there and give it that little extra bit 
right there. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase the tension to where it's pretty much stopped right there. If I really wanted to ramp this down, I could. But now I've got a much greater range of tension just from adding one of those rings. Uh, but now that I've got that done, I'm going to put this all together. Make sure the set screw lines up with that, and the depth here is pretty much perfect. So just make sure one lines up with the other, and then start screwing it in. And as long as it goes in as far as it's supposed to, you've actually got it lined up. And it's not going anywhere. See? It's in there. And now you got the best of both worlds. Because this particular pick kicks ass right here. I will tell you. This particular pick kicks ass. Um, it it combines the best of, of both of these other picks. And you can really lock down some tight tension on here. And I'm not expecting that this will actually pick for me on camera because this lock is actually very good. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna at least give it a demo try. You know, good good old college try here. Oh geez, huh. no wonder it's not working. I got I got confused by the color of everything. <laughs> I'm not using the correct body, so I've got to go ahead and you, you guys get a bonus. You get to see me fix my screw up. See how fast I can take these things down and redo them. <laughs> it's not a race, but why not? Okay, and then we grab this. I thought this was going together a little bit differently than I was used to seeing it go. It turns out it was going differently because it was the wrong damn instrument. Now let me get the proper one in the box. Because obviously I put the wrong one in. Okay, here we go. Here's the proper one. So we've pretty much just got to go ahead and reassemble the wrong one. Uh, pain in my ass. Alright, put the center ring in first this here. Oh, here we go. Also, the land in this, where you can put the screw, the land on this is much larger. It's not this narrow, annoying piece of crap. I mean, you've got to have the screw exactly where it's supposed to be on this one versus that wide-ass land on here. But, whatever. I guess I'm done complaining for now. Put all these in here. Another thing that I really like about well, all lock picking tools that I've come across in general, but especially these kinds of lock picking tools, uh, they're they're very simply done. They're very simply done. You don't need a lot of tools. You don't even not need particularly high amounts of coordination or anything so Bosnian Bill this ought to be right up your alley uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here I can get this moving around a little bit uh, lock it down to where it's not too damn tight shove these through here shove these through here they got some really tight tolerances on these huck components which is another thing I really love about the modification that you know, I'm going to be showing you and I'm just going to leave all this stuff in completely unedited because 
who knows what you'll be able to pick up from it. I mean, the whole point, the whole reason I'm doing this isn't to make myself look good or to save my own face. It's to help you learn something. So as long as you've learned something, I don't really care if I look like a blooming idiot. But, uh, anyway, uh, put this one that way. Uh, of course, I'm going to look like a blooming idiot if I don't stop doing that. Alright, here we go. And it's, those are all pretty much held in there as, as well as they're going to be. Um, that's the one that I've got to use. Where's the... Here's the one that I don't got to use. Put this back in here. Like that. And put this on. Okay, one piece of crap fully assembled and ready to go. Ah, okay, this is the one that we've actually got to do, so I'll just try and do it nice and nice and fast here. up using one of those. Remember, because we got to put one back inside. And just loosen this ring. Pull it off. I have all these drop. Like I said, I'm just taking the extra ultra quick route right now. I'm not really concerned about being careful. You should be. Especially if you don't want to ruin your investment. But uh, anyway, this is the one we actually want to use. So we get, uh, shit, what do we get? Oh yeah, we get this. And this, just to press those on there, because it helps. But then, we don't forget, we want one of these. Let me put this in here. Make sure you face the collar and the flange the right way, otherwise you're going to be really frustrated trying to figure out why the hell it doesn't work. Not that that's ever happened to me, but, you know, just something I anticipate might happen to some of you guys. Um, <laughs> put this on, and slide these in. I know this must be really, really, really engrossing, but I'm expecting that there might be a couple of you out there who are really interested in seeing this kind of really up close detail about these instruments so that's why I'm doing this that's why I'm not editing any of this crap because ordinarily I would I would edit but you know this is educational now those back ones won't go in without a little bit of help so even though this feels loose we're gonna loosen it some more and now, voila, they go right in. So don't forget that, guys and girls. If you get to a point like this where you can't really shove anything else in there, loosen that stupid little set screw a little bit. Don't, don't break anything. Don't bend anything. Don't do anything that's not necessary. Just go to the bother. Going around, loosening the little set screw just a little bit more. It'll save you a hell of a lot of trouble. Notice, with this, everything put in, look how far up those go. I'm going to zoom out, or not zoom out, I'm going to refocus for close up so I can show you. Look how far over the line all those go. So, they will actually settle in the right place. The The length doesn't screw it up because of the extra uh, uh, length that the pins had already anyway. So, because if, if you remember I showed you the difference between this barrel and this one from right, uh, from right here where the set screw holes are. 
way you can see that the way they compensate for that on the old one is just by doing this and they make that shorter but the problem is you still don't get in near as far because this chuck has to sit right here and on this shaft the bottom of this chuck is right here which means you only have this much space to work with so if you've got any kind of warding at all around the lock that you're trying to work with you are going to find no love um, so you put the little magnet on this on and that is actually pretty crucial for our spacing here too because if it weren't for that this would not line up perfectly you'd have to you'd have to do some jiggery pokery with it All right, and there we go and this is your modified highly kicking ass um, pick of course you gotta not forget to tighten the set screw enough to stop the chuck from wandering when you want to tighten it but don't tighten it up so much that you get varied tension on these pins check the tension and there's going to be some there's going to be some variation between the front ones and the back ones like this one here is really tight because the set screw is on the other side and the more we screw in the set screw the more this way this whole end of the chuck goes so the tighter it grabs on the back end here so we'll have as much as you know several ounces of difference between the front and the back but that actually isn't matter it doesn't matter isn't isn't important very much because we have our very tension and that's what's important especially for this lock this may or may not work and this is basically how you do it but I don't think this is going to work because I don't have things set up quite right I mean it's it's getting the depths almost right but I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I know something about these locks just to show you that this device will indeed actually at least turn the core which is really important if it won't turn the core it's never gonna work so we pooch our little things out and you just press it down by hand you don't have to make them real level and crap like that um, this lock is already opened so what that means is that the pins inside are already at their proper shear depths to operate which means I should be able to just put this pick in there and turn the core and I can I can put this pick in here and turn this core um, the problem is if I do that before the pick is set which I did the spring pressure is going to knock all these bastards out of here and it'll stop and it'll freeze right there and this is where we come to why I saw the notch off this key. Ordinarily, the top notch on a key would prevent it from being withdrawn in that position or inserted in that position. But because I saw it off the top notch, I can just reset that lock where it should be with no problem. Go back and do this and smooth all these out. Put this back in. And then, if I just do this and rattle it around a little bit, I can get my depths set and then I can tighten this chuck down pretty much as far as I can and now we should be able to take this and at least relock this voila and then if we're really lucky and these pins haven't moved too far I should be able to unlock it yep unlocked Let's see if I can relock it again, because I mean, the pins move around after a while and it, it won't stay. But, yeah, see, I, it, it lost it right there. Um, ordinarily, if you were, and this is why single pin picking does not work, by the way. I'll just show you real quick. Is single pin picking, these will never work. Not only because of the massive spring tension and the alternating spring tension, but because every single quarter turn, it locks again see so there's the first quarter there's the first half there's the third quarter 
damn it. There's the third quarter. And you'll see that that still isn't going to unlock a damn thing. This shank is probably about halfway down to where it goes, but it's still not completely unlocked. Which means you're going to need to put this in here and turn it the final quarter, well, almost a quarter. You see it's a maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe three degrees off, four degrees off, something like that. But anyway, now this is finally down low enough to where you could open the door that it was securing. But, but it won't do that until you've actually gone past the fourth turn the fourth little stopping point. And if you don't make it past that, you're not opening it up, which means in order to pick this lock, single pin, you would actually have to pick it four times just to open it. If you wanted to close it again, assuming you were picking it and, and doing non-destructive entry for a reason, so you'd want to actually have it closed again, you'd have to pick this lock a total of eight times in order to have a covert entry through it which is just not damn practical at all especially if you don't have anything even remotely resembling the proper uh, equipment anyway so so this here is the is the the granddaddy of all of all picking tools it really is um, aside from and, and I'm not kidding you at all aside from this lock right here and I imagine probably any ace 2 lock because the tension is just too high even this even this can't deal with it. Maybe if I threw in another one of these, it could. Uh, and I'll try that later. And I'll give you an update if it works. But um, this hybrid thing right here that I've made out of both the Southern and the Cheap Hux um, is a very good pick. I have successfully picked easily 30 locks with this. Um, all different locks. Uh, and probably about 25 of them were mine uh, the other ones were those of friends or, or neighbors or something else like that but uh, you know stay safe stay legal as Bossy and Bill always says and uh, do not think that you're gonna get one of these and get like you know start robbing vending machines and video games because it's not gonna work and there's a very good reason why it's not gonna work these locks are essentially phased out. The only place you'll ever find these locks are on stuff that's indoors. They don't use ace locks on outdoor stuff anymore. So you can pretty much kiss goodbye your idea of getting one of these and and what? Robbing people and robbing things. You, you're not going to be able to do that because most of these locks are on indoor machines now where they even still exist. There's a new type of lock called a van lock that, that is replacing these and then there's also um, oh bloody hell there's another kind of lock that that does this kind of thing and it has a cylinder shape and is designed to go inside vending machines um, but those locks are nowhere near as good as a lot of people think they are. I'm not even going to name them right now um, probably because I can't remember what the names are but you know just if you're gonna get if you're gonna get a lock if you're gonna get a lock pick uh, and you can afford to get more than one get the Southern and the Huck set because the two of them together are going to make something that you actually need um, versus the two of them either one of the two alone aren't very good the Huck is completely unusable and of course the uh, uh, the southern is very cheaply made in the, in the in the central part in the central part of it's very cheaply made so uh, and bear all that good stuff in mind and uh, you know happy lock sporting and 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 whatnot and and uh, thanks for watching <laughs>